Hello and welcome to this online Monday Thursday worship service with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And on behalf of the musicians who will be leading us in music tonight, and my family, uh, Reverend Curtis Brown, Joy, and Karis, uh, we welcome you. We're so glad that you are here and that you will be participating in this uh, beautiful special service on this special day. I want to encourage you to use the contact form that is pinned in our comment section. This is a wonderful way that we can connect with you at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, particularly if this is your first time to join with us in worship. Make sure that you fill out that contact form. We really do want to be able to connect with you, uh, to worship with you, to encourage you in your life of faith, to connect you with opportunities for service and for small groups and all of those ministries. So please use that contact form and know that there is a place there for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So use those uh, that form there and those prayer requests as well. Now on this service of Monday Thursday, we remember Jesus' command to us to love one another. And we remember Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. You're going to want some equipment to be able to fully participate in this worship today. I encourage you to have available to you some way to wash your hands, maybe a bowl with some water and some soap and a towel, access to a sink with uh, hand washing, or just some hand sanitizer as we do our symbolic foot washing by washing hands today. And then we'll also be having communion for all people. Everyone is invited and welcome to be a part of this, but you'll want to have some kind of bread, a baked good, a cracker with you to be able to eat, and then some juice or some kind of other beverage with you that you'll be able to drink. So uh, gather those things up now and let's center our Ourselves, uh, with this time of music. And again, welcome. Mm.
Our first story from the Bible is from the Gospel of John in chapter 13. We're reading verses from the Message Translation by Eugene Peterson. Jesus gives a new commandment. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come to leave this world to go to the Father. Having loved his dear companions, he continued to love them right to the end. It was supper time. Jesus knew that the Father had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God and was on his way back to God. So he got up from the supper table, set aside his robe, and put on an apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them with his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? Jesus answered, You don't understand now what I am doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted, You are not going to wash my feet, ever. Jesus said, If I don't wash you, you can't be a part of what I'm doing. Master, said Peter, not only my feet then, Wash my hands. Wash my head. Jesus said, If you've had a bath in the morning, you only need your feet washed now, and you're clean from head to toe. My concern, you understand, is holiness, not hygiene. So now you're clean. After he had finished washing their feet, Jesus took his robe, put it back on, and went back to his place at the table. Then Jesus said, do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, washed your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. Jesus continued to teach them, and he let them know that one of the group of the beloved companions would betray him. Judas Iscariot. Then Jesus said to them, Let me give you a new command. Love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples, when they see the love you have for each other. Thank you, God, for the story of Jesus' love and our sharing in it together. Amen. Thank you for the reading, y'all. Today is Maundy Thursday. And uh, that Monday word is kind of a weird one, but it's one we get from Latin. And it means commandment. Jesus gives us a new commandment to love one another. In the same way I loved you, love one another, he tells us. This is how Jesus' disciples are going to be recognized in the world, is by our love and our love for one another, and our loving actions. Then in our Bible story, Jesus goes on to show us what that love looks like in action. Before they share their final meal together, Jesus gets down at his disciples' feet and he washes them. He washes their feet, dirty, stinky, tickly feet. It's a beautiful image and a beautiful act, but it's a little bit unsettling, too. You know, washing feet in uh, Jesus' time in a household was uh, an act that was reserved for the person that was lowest on, uh, in, in the social ladder in the household. Usually, whoever the slave was, that was the, the lowest of the slaves. And if there were no slaves in the household, then the youngest daughter was the person who washed people's feet when they came into the household. Sorry, Karis. Jesus does this intimate act with great love and great tenderness for his disciples. And Jesus says that he has laid down a pattern for us to do what he does. That the way we show love to other people is to do the kinds of things that Jesus does. I want you to think for a minute about uh, what kinds of things do we see Jesus doing in the Bible? What are those things? And I invite you to put those in the comment section now. What kind of things do you all see Jesus doing in the Bible? You remember? He does the feeding of 
all of the people. Sure. Miracles. Miracles. Gathers folks and loves them. Absolutely. We want you to put uh, your thoughts in the comments as well. You know, Jesus invites you to be his disciples, us to be his disciples, everyone to be his disciples, to do the kinds of things that he does. And all of us will be known as his disciples because of our practices of love. Self-giving, self-stretching, deep and abiding love, doing what is needed with great love, just like Jesus. On this Monday Thursday, as a way to remember this pattern that Jesus has set for us, to love one another as he has loved us, I invite you to wash one another's hands or wash one another's feet. Um, to do that in your home while we sing our next hymn. You can go to a sink and use soap and water and, and a towel and wash each other's hands. You could just use hand sanitizer if you're there on your own. Go ahead and take this moment to wash your hands or use that hand sanitizer and remember Jesus' great love and Jesus' command to us to love one another. Please join us in singing They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love. To our time for Holy Communion, I encourage you, if you have not already done so, to bring your bread, your baked good, your cracker, um, your grape juice, your juice, your beverage, whatever you have with you for Holy Communion, and bring that up close to you now as we continue in this time. We continue to hear about Jesus' last night with his companions as they shared supper together for the last time. We're reading from the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 26 the bread and the cup. During the meal Jesus was sharing with his companions, Jesus took and blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Jesus said to them, Take, eat, this is my body. And then, taking the cup and thanking God, he gave it to them. Jesus said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, God's new covenant poured out for many people for the forgiveness of sins. I'll not be drinking wine from this cup again until that new day when I'll drink with you in the kingdom of my Father. 
Thank you, God, for this story of Jesus' love and our sharing it together. Amen. Thank you, ladies, for that reading. Jesus is at it again. He is encouraging us, challenging us, and this time it's through a meal, a simple meal. We think that Jesus was celebrating the Passover meal with his disciples when he gave us this time of communion. Uh, the Passover meal is highly ritualized with all kinds of special foods that are eaten during it and storytelling and the remembering of God's mighty acts of bringing the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt through to a journey of new life and new beginnings. In that meal, Jesus takes two simple things, bread and wine. And he continues the ancient and powerful story of God's mighty acts, the breaking of bonds and the giving of freedom. But this time, Jesus takes it into himself. He sacrifices for bondage breaking and life giving grace and love. The bread, Jesus says, is his very body given for you, for me and for the world. And the wine, Jesus said, is his blood creating a new covenant, a new promise of the chains of sin broken, a new life given. Jesus does this amazing thing with bread and wine and with his disciples. Not holy people or perfect people, his disciples. Jesus knew that they did not understand what was happening. He knew that one of them was going to betray him to the authorities. He knew the rest were going to desert him and run away from him and even deny knowing him at all when he comes to his trial and to his death. They would run away in fear and disbelief. And in the midst of this messiness, in this hurt, this sin, this brokenness, Jesus gives this meal as a sign of his promise, his grace, and his abiding and transforming love. And in the mystery of sharing in this meal together, we are one with Jesus and one with each other, loved and forgiven and transformed. And so everybody is welcome to this time of Holy Communion. All are welcome to share and eat and drink with all that you are and wherever you are and whomever you are. Church member, not a church member, with your age, with your ethnicity, with your gender identity and your sexual orientation, sitting alone or gathered with other people. In the fullness of who you are, however you are, and wherever you are, you are welcome here. This is Jesus' table. And that means that everyone is invited to eat. I invite you as we prepare to receive all that Jesus offers us in Holy Communion to take a few moments of silent prayer. Take this time to focus, to give to Jesus your brokenness, your sinfulness, to um, offer that all to Jesus right now. Let us pray. We offer all of this to you, loving Jesus. Thank you for loving us, who we are, as we are, and always, always calling us forward into freedom and new life. Amen. We're going to continue with some prayers, and I invite you to bring your bread and your juice close and get those ready. So, Karis, if you'll help us get these ready. Those things close by to you, bread and juice, put them where you need them. Got them? All right. All right. And I invite you to join with me now in prayer. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God. Thank you for creating us in your image, for giving us life, for never, ever giving up on us. Even when we reject you, you continue to love us, to call us by name, and to show us the ways to reclaim your ever-present love. 
We thank you for Jesus who has shown us in powerful word and action what it means to love completely. He fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave us this holy meal as a promise of his abiding presence. In Jesus' abiding presence, we offer now the concerns and the joys of our hearts. We offer them in silence and we'll share them as we feel led in our Facebook comments. Lord, in your infinite mercy, receive our prayers. I invite you to hold your bread in your hand for just a few moments. We remember on the night Jesus gave himself up for us. He took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can set your bread down. And I invite you to pick up your cup and uh, your beverage and hold that in your hands. We remember then how Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to you, Almighty God, and gave it to his friends and disciples gathered there and said, Take and drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. You can put your cup down. Tonight, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice of love, intimately bound with Christ's offering for us. I invite you to hold up your hands as we pray now for the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered across geography and time, and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts that each of us has brought, bread and cup. Make all of these gifts of bread and cup be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ that we may be for the world the living body of Christ redeemed and empowered by his amazing love. You can put your hands down. Make us one loving God bound together in Jesus in ministry to our communities and world until Jesus comes in final victory and we feast with him and one another face to face at his heavenly banquet table. Through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church connected throughout time and space, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And as God's precious and beloved children, let's join together in praying the prayer that Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to pick up your piece of bread. And let's eat. This is Jesus' love given for you. Now I invite you to pick up your cup. Dear ones, this is Jesus' love given to you. Let's drink. I invite you now to join with me in our prayer of thanks and We'll do this uh, in a repeat after me prayer. So I'll say a line and you just say it back to me and we'll pray together in that way. Loving God. Loving God. Thank you for feeding us. Thank you for feeding us. With bread and cup. With bread and cup. With forgiveness and love. With forgiveness and love. Thank you for connecting us in love. Thank you for connecting us in love. Thank you for sending us to serve. 
Thank you for sending us to serve. Doing the kinds of things Jesus did. Doing, Doing the, the kinds of things Jesus did. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing What Wondrous Love Is This. so much for joining in this time of worship on this special day with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I pray that this experience has helped you in your walk of faith, that as we continue in worship through these great three days of Good Friday and all the way through to Easter Sunday, that this beginning place here on Monday, Thursday has fed your soul, that has put you in touch with the love of Jesus Christ and how much God loves you. I want to encourage you again to use that contact form if you have not done so, so that we can connect with you and to remember that there's a place there for your prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. And then I want to encourage you to continue to worship with us over these days. We will have an online Good Friday service, uh, very specially here online at 7 p.m. that is brought to us by the Illinois Great Rivers Conference, Black Methodists for Church Renewal. And this is going to be an amazing worship experience. So make sure you join with us then. We have our Easter adventure scavenger hunt on Saturday from 10 to noon in the church parking lot and outdoors. So come anytime with your family then between 10 and noon to join us. And then on Easter Sunday, we have opportunities to worship online, inside and outside with 815 communion in the sanctuary, with a 1030 online worship service right here. And then at 10 and 11 o'clock with Easter worship in the park at the gazebo at Washington Park. All of the information for those is available on our Facebook page and also on our website. So please join with us in these times of worship. And now as you go, go knowing that God loves you completely, that Jesus calls you to be his disciple and to be known by his love, and that the Holy Spirit fills you and heals you and makes this loving service possible. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Mm -hmm.